Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at Dying Light Platinum Edition. This one is for the Nintendo Switch, it's the latest release out to make or break the power of the Switch, but how does it play, what's it all about, how's that frame rate and is it going to be worth it? Well hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. So first off, I'm yet to beat the Switch build, so take that as you will. I have, however, played this game multiple times at this point, including all DLC. The game, though, it's been out for basically a long time, so I can give you at least a quick overview of all mechanics, then dive into what this Switch build is all about and what it is bringing to the table. Right now, I'd say I'm about 8 hours into it, though, giving me a good feel for this port's quality. Story-wise then, we'll be taking on the role of Kyle Crane, a GRE agent who is heading into Haran to retrieve some sort of document, though what it contains is left as a mystery. Now to do this, we have essentially warring factions in what is a post-zombie outbreak world. We need to now infiltrate and work out who the enemy is. Quickly, you do identify your target though and you side with the opposition. It's really a story of war mixed with overcoming impossible odds that drive you as a character to question your responsibilities to those around you and I gotta say it really is good stuff. I've always enjoyed the world and the cast from the over the top warlord of sorts opposing you to those that you need to save. Throughout this world then there's plenty of side quests with their own short story arcs attached to pad things out and in this edition it packs all extra content that includes extra missions like a fantastic prison assault to the following that is basically a DLC that added a further 10 hours or so of story content that we're not going to be going into for spoiler's sake. So gameplay and we have a first person shooter mixed in with some acrobatic parkour style exploration. It did enough back at release to separate itself from the countless other first person shooters out there. That's especially true though when you factor in just how many zombie games were around at this time as well. Open world though in design it somewhat reminds me I think Far Cry to a certain extent in its world design and layout. Essentially though you can go anywhere but you probably shouldn't until we level Crane up by completing early game missions and paying attention to the countless side quests on offer. It's not a game that's going to hand you all the guns and power immediately and you'll need to grind it just like a little bit because the opening couple of hours and even beyond that to a certain extent can be summed up as you relying on what is weak melee weapons. The trick, avoid the tougher gunfights because bringing let's say a table leg to war probably isn't going to suffice. Leveling up though comes in three forms initially, that's going to be survivor, agility and power and all have their own separate XP counter, the latter two displayed at the top of the screen. These they come down to kick some ass in combat, explore and then complete missions. This for me is where Dying Light really does shine, it's got an incredibly in-depth skill system that across the three areas has extensive skill trees that kind of shape Crane while giving the player control over what the skill set looks like and that can be a combination of active and passive skills as well. Think here those stealth kills like exploding cars, a grappling hook for exploration, improved traversal and stamina to finishing moves that will take an enemy out in a second. That's particularly useful because initially these zombies you'll be best running away most of the time. Now once you even max one of these skill trees out then you'll even get access to a fourth known as legends. The game's world though, it's mixed with an array of zombies and human enemies. It makes for a nice mix of gameplay styles. You could face a foe with a gun, maybe stealth your way around out of sight. Maybe you'll see a, like a wave of enemies and you need to run the opposite direction. You'll quickly learn skills that aid you. Think like parkering off their faces and out of arm's way. How about zombies that explode or have like human-like speed? They've got you covered here too with all the skills you need. The game's constantly looking for new ways to push you and while the AI I'd say is very much designed to overwhelm you, I enjoyed its variety and I quickly learned where to stand my ground and when to pick up and get the hell out of the way. 
Outside of core missions and quests though, you can expect stores to visit around this world, challenges to face like think parkour runs in a certain time limit, maybe there's items to collect and there's a whole lot of them here, blueprints to unlock new crafting, especially if you want those better weapons and things like med packs, then there's even safe houses to unlock. Now the safe houses, these are moments where you need to secure the location and then you can use it as kind of think a rest spot. This resting it restores health because it only regens in game to 25, but also because the game works on a day and night cycle and the night is particularly brutal with hunter like zombies that will pursue you they will catch up to you so yeah this is another beginner tip make sure you rest at these like safe houses clear them out quickly you're gonna absolutely need them the controls then finally and impressive it's pretty much a straight up better match from other consoles but it really works so it's it's also a little bit out of the ordinary in some ways for example jumping is the right trigger and holding it kicks in that kind of climb ability the left trigger even won't aim rather it will actually implement a secondary attack i'd describe it as take a little time to get used to it but it really is a good layout that's gonna feel really good a few hours into the game there's also then minor gyro controls as well, but only for when you're aiming down the scope of a gun, and that really is about it. Now, it could have done with a few extra options, honestly, in my opinion, to kind of really make the inclusion feel like it was a little more than simply, you know, jumping through a hoop for the port. The final piece to this Switch build then is all that extra content and it really is a complete package here. The following DLC, that's an expansive story add on the Horde DLC, another good one, Cuisine and Cargo, that adds on new zones and then Howl Raid, that takes things into a fantasy setting. Then on top of that, there's a ton of cosmetic and weapon packs as well from Out There Fantasy to Neon to a crossover with Left 4 Dead 2. It's a solid selection of content which you like to see when a game is coming to an another platform this many years after that initial release. With that though, let's jump into how the Switch build stands up with a frame rate and graphical focus. So first off, the frame rate, and it's not bad at all. It's unlocked, which has its issues at times, honestly, especially at nighttime, which seemed to waver pretty aggressively. But for the most part, I found the game was performing somewhere between I'd say 30 and 40 frames per second with drops down to like maybe around 25 on occasion. You probably guessed this as well but this was typically in moments of huge swarms, perhaps we had a large fist a few or even at night time. So look, I would have preferred locked to 30 and I know there's going to be comments saying we need 60 for a first person shooter. Typically, I would agree, but I did not come into this one expecting that at all. I think it's just too big a world for the Switch to cope with. Locked 30 though would have probably been smarter, but hopefully we can see patches in the future to smooth things out. Visually then, it's decent. Some moments they're gonna absolutely wow you, others you'll start to see the corners they've had to cut. Now, Dying Light for a mostly unfit experience is like surprisingly fast, however, and it's tough to see those corners cut outside of, let's say, an extra dose of pixelation. But it's really when you stop to take in a moment that you realize we've seen textures absolutely pull back. And then there's quite a large amount of popping as well. Early game here is so aggressively focused on melee attacks though, you probably won't pick up on it. It's when you get guns in your hands and you start to work more on a ranged basis so that it becomes kind of noticeable. That said though, look, I actually think it's a really well handled port and it looked great on the OLED as well for any owners out there. A quick note though on that point, tough game to control on Joy-Con because it's so heavy on its use of triggers. It's a situation though where the downgrade is apparent, but I think they've mostly kind of maximized what they could with the hardware at hand. I wish it didn't have popping, but Techland, gotta say, look, it's still kind of impressive what they've pulled off here. So audio finally, and I'll keep it quick, surprisingly decent voice acting that are working with a fun script. The music, I've never loved it all that much honestly, but it's also not kind of bad. Just very kind of typical of the world without really pushing any boundaries. And then the sound effects, love the weapon sounds and brains getting smashed in, which is going to be absolutely key to, you know, any sort of zombie experience. So the final verdict and no official score from me today in the typical sense I haven't beaten this one, 
but if I was to attach a number at this current point of the game, seeing the performance, the port work and everything else, it would be a great 8 out of 10 from me because they've kept the experience intact and it's one honestly I'm just a big fan of. Now sure it has some issues in the port mostly from a visual and frame rate perspective but it's aged incredibly well in a gameplay sense and now I cannot wait for that second entry. On a note of that second entry though, a little disappointed but also not surprised to hear that one it's going to be cloud based so I'll personally be jumping into that one on another platform. Now will you be adding this to the library? How do you feel about the port and do you think it's going to be worth the cash this many years later. A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.